So a while back on my YouTube and my Discord, we kicked off a community project called CoRacer. We had a bunch of random people come together and within two weeks, we built a really nice functioning application using Next.js, which leads me to today where I am announcing that I'm kicking off another community project. This one's gonna be a little bit different. This community project is sponsored by Convex and we're gonna be using Convex's backend as a service to build out a lot of the functionality for this project. I'm sure you've seen my channel, you've seen a lot of the stuff I've done about Convex. I like it a lot. And we have a diagram here that's gonna walk you through how my iteration zero of the backend is gonna look like. And then I'll talk about how you can contribute and what the idea of this project is. So for this community project, I got into a meeting with Jamie, who is this guy right here. He's one of the co-founders of Convex, a very, very smart guy and worked at Dropbox for years and knows how to deal with large amounts of data and syncing it back and forth between devices. And by the way, if you're not already subscribed to the Convex YouTube channel, go check it out. They have a really cool podcast called Data Based, where they talk about in-depth topics related to database, scaling, really cool stuff. So go check that out. But basically the idea he had is, can we have different AI models compete against each other by playing a game? And I do want to say that at one point, the Primogen was doing something similar with the tower defense games, but you guys know the Primogen, so I don't need to go tell you to subscribe to them. So that was the overarching idea is like, can we have AI models compete with each other and have like a leaderboard of like which ones are the best. So with that idea, we had to think about a game. So I kind of brainstormed a little bit and I thought, you know, what games could an AI model potentially play? So some of the first games that were mentioned were like, you know, doing like a chest or a checkers or some type of like connect four type of game. But a lot of those have been solved and it's not as exciting. Um, so some of the ideas that I thought about was, okay, well, let's take like a 2D strategy game that we could just make ourselves and we could have one side of the board be like one AI model and the other side of the board be a different AI model, which I think would be a really cool idea. Some other ideas I thought about was like, can we just remake Worms Armageddon? But every player on the board could potentially be its own AI model. So like we could have four worms on the board and every time it's your turn, that AI model would decide where it wants to shoot its missile to maybe win the match, okay? So I think this would also be a really cool game. But thinking about these two games, we decided that, you know what, we want a more deterministic game so that every AI has a equal playing field. We don't want to have a bunch of math out randoms in here to make it so that one AI model might win when really it was just luck. So that all led me to this final idea, which I plan to build with the community, if you're interested, where we're going to have a 2D grid and a AI model can place where they want their players to be, all right? So maybe the first map will be simple, just be one player, and then they can also place a destructible crate. But every map has a static starting point of all these different zombies, okay? So the, the goal, it's like a strategy game, is you need to place your players in the most optimal place so that you can kill all the zombies before they come kill you. So that is the overall idea. It's gonna be a turn-based game, Basically, every AI model can play against the exact same static map, and whichever AI model beats that level continues on to the next level and gets a point. Now, we'll probably have to smooth out some rough edges along the way and try to figure out some game design, but I do think that the player, every turn, will just shoot at the closest zombie. Again, this all needs to be deterministic. So the closest zombie to the player automatically gets shot. Maybe the zombies could have one or two lives. The player could just have one life, and the moment a zombie hits the player, it's game over. And one more thing I want to mention is that the board, I want to have some static things here, such as rocks that are impassable. So they can't be destroyed. Players can't go through them. Zombies can't go through them. And that would really dictate where you need to put your players because certain paths may have a longer travel distance to get from point A to point B. So then I moved to ChatGPT and I wanted to validate this idea. So I went ahead and just pasted in the entire game board like we talked about. And then I want to describe the different tokens on the board. R stands for rocks. Players can shoot over these rocks, but zombies cannot go through them or break them. Stands for zombies. Their goal is to reach the player to kill them and can move one Manhattan step every turn. P is the player. The player can never move. Your goal is to put the player somewhere on this map to optimize their survival. You can place up to two blocks before you start the round. Okay, so we kind of described the game a little bit and what the different pieces mean. Now let's just give a walk through one more time for GPT to make sure it understands the goal. Your goal is to take the map I provided you and try to place the player and two blocks somewhere on the map so that the player can have the highest optimal survival chance. Remember that the player cannot move, so you need to put them in the best place possible so that they can shoot at the zombies before the zombies get to them. All right, and so looking at this map, if I was playing this game, my first intuition would be put the player there because 
They are protected by the rocks, and the zombies would have to come around the rocks to get to the player. Also, the player can shoot across the rocks and hit the zombies. So, I, to me, it'd be the best to put it there. Maybe it's the best to put it up there. Who knows? We'd have to actually probably get some game logic to determine, like, the max distance a player could shoot. Okay, now it's saying to put the player in the top left corner. And, in fact, depending on how far the player could shoot, this might be the optimal place to put it. Because this zombie would probably be killed by the time it gets to the player. And then this zombie would take a much longer time to get to the player and then finally get killed. So technically, maybe this is right. But we won't know until we build out this game and try it out for ourselves. And the idea is to not only just use open AI, but we want to use other AI models to see which ones can beat the maps the best. So now let's talk about the high level design of how like the convex backend is going to work. Now this is again iteration zero. We might add on to this. It might get a little bit more complex, but I want to keep it simple for the people who join in early for this project and are able to kind of pick this apart and, and build stuff. So for right now, we're going to have a couple of data structures that we need to talk about, right? We're going to have the maps. So the ability to store a bunch of different maps, which would have like a map ID, the initial board state that we just showed you with the GPT prompt over here, and also the index, right? So this will be like the ordering. What map is the, the easiest map? What map is the next one? Then one after that. And so this will just be like a number that's incrementing based on the map level. You know, we'll just call it level and it could be like level one, level two, level three or something like that. And so when you kick off a new game, we're going to go ahead and say we want to use a model of 40 mini or something like that. And that's going to store a record for like, hey, this model is kicking off a new game and a game could have multiple different maps it has to play through. And we're going to keep track of that. So we have a game ID and that's what's going to get persisted throughout this whole flow of data. So this mutation is going to schedule an action and the action is going to basically grab in the map based on the level. So like over here, we could have level one and it's going to pull in that information and use that game state, the initial board and pass it to the AI model. So in this case, we would be using like 40 mini for iteration zero, but we're going to add in other things like perplexity or whatever. So again, we pass in the game rules, we pass in the current board state, we pass in whatever else we may need to make this model be able to play the game and the idea is to keep it consistent so every model will get the exact same prompt and then we will see what model is able to take our prompt and play the best with it so this will run the llm and we should get back some output now we want to keep track of where it decided to put the player where it wanted to put the blocks and then also the reasoning behind why it picked those locations okay so this will all come back and we'll have the action here and then what we want to do is we want to simulate the game so basically run through every turn and figure out, hey, does the player actually survive at the end or does the player die? Like how far do the zombies get, etc. And if the player happens to survive, we will keep track of that over here and send that to this mutation. So we'll have like the model ID, we'll have some reasoning, we will have the level, and then we'll have like is win. Okay, so we'll keep track of like if we simulated that game, did the player actually win? And then we're going to store that historically so we can go back later and like view through the history and try to figure out why is this, you know, AI keep failing at this particular map? Well, it's because this is the reasoning they keep giving and this is why they fail. So we'll store all that in the rounds. So again, like a game has multiple rounds. We could probably call it results. Yeah, I'm going to call it results instead of rounds. So this is the result of an AI model playing a particular level. And then we basically just have this mutation schedule off the next level okay so go ahead and increment the level by one so now we'll be at level two and we keep doing this until we've finished all the maps somewhere we'll have to know if we're like done with all the maps we could probably do it in here like fetch from the maps table and then say like okay we're at level 10 we're done now as far as scoring i think every time we win on a map all we need to do is just increment a score for that model i think this design right here will get us pretty far into building out something cool and we can iterate upon it uh, later in the Discord together. Okay, so does that make sense? We understand the game. We understand why we want to keep it like deterministic. We have a higher level diagram of how we're going to implement this. And then finally, how do you actually contribute to this project? If you want to contribute, um, I would just warn you now that this will probably move fast. And so if you're not actually contributing within the first couple of days, there's probably going to be a lot of this stuff already coded out. And you may not feel like you can contribute. But you can always clone the repo and try to play around with it yourself. So here's the repo we have survive the night sim and right now it's an empty repo but i do plan to set up convex with uh, convex off because at some point i want players themselves to be able to log in 
and play against these maps by hand if they want to. Like, not just have AIs play, but players can come in and try to beat these levels as well to make it a fun little strategy that people can do. So let's go to Convex Auth, and they have a really cool tool that you can run just to set up a Next.js project already set up with Convex Auth. So let's just run this right here, and we will select Next.js as an option. So will run this, and then it's going to ask us the name of our project. I'll say Survive the Night Sim. And then we're going to say Next with App Router. We'll do Convex Auth. And that should set up our Convex project with Next.js. So when you clone this project and run npm run dev, you'll have to go and set up your own Convex account. And then it's going to ask you like what, what team or what project you want to add this to. Select your own and you can name this whatever you want. Now to get to login with GitHub working, which you're going to have to do, is go to your own GitHub account, go to settings, and then you need to go to developers. Or you can just go to this URL right here. And then click on new OAuth app. You need to create your application name. You need to add a URL, like I just put localhost 3000. But the authorized callback URL, this is important. You need to put a URL that looks like this. Now this will all be in the readme, um, so you can just follow the readme. When you create a convex project, you will see in the URL your project name. You will have to basically use this and replace whatever I have here, okay? But this is the, the full URL of that. And once you create your application, you can then start logging in with the sign in over here. And by the way, if you're ever confused, just join the Discord find the community and uh, ask me a question. All right, that is as far as I'm gonna take this kickoff video. Be sure to pull changes often because I will be making changes. I'll be working on this project as along with everyone else who might be um, contributing. I went ahead and pushed all those changes up. So you should be able to get those all working and download them yourself. All right, the last thing I wanna point out is if you plan to contribute to this, you need to join my Discord and you need to go to the Survive the Night channel. This is where we're gonna be talking about this project. If you try to contribute with a pull request and you're not part of this community, you might get ignored because I want this to be a community project and not just a bunch of random people working on stuff and making pull requests. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys jump on in and try to build something with me and I will make another update video, maybe a stream in a little bit where I'll work on this live maybe next weekend or something. All right, have a good day. Happy coding.